Hi, I'm Lori from New York Life, and today we're going to be talking about motivation. Not insurance, but this can help you in any aspect of your life. Um, we're coming up to the end of the quarter, and a lot of people are um, tired. You know, they're, they're working hard, they're trying to meet their goals, and some people are struggling. I just talked to a couple of people this week. They're, they're ready to tap out. And so they needed a little push, a little motivation to get them back into the game. And today I just wanted to talk about some of that because a lot of people out there are, are right now, they just need a little push, get them through this December and, you know, get ready for January. So I just wanted to go over just, a, you know, some things that you can do to help get yourself back in the game. Um, one of them is just remember why you're, you're in this and what you're doing it for and what you left behind to get to where you are now. Um, it was funny, I was doing a couple of things last week that I haven't done in a while. And I remembered, I was like, now I remember why I'm self-employed. You know, because of all the nonsense that you went through when you were working for someone else and doing things you didn't want to do and jumping through hoops you didn't have to necessarily jump through. So that gave me that little oomph to say, you know, this is why I'm doing it. And then I ran into a person who really needed some help and we sat down and she just, blah, everything that was going on with her. And you know, I sell insurance and annuities and long-term care, but no one told me I was gonna have to be a therapist with it. And you know, after she, we talked and we figured some stuff out and she was like, okay, I can do this now. And I said, okay, great. And we sat down, we figured out a game plan. And again, that gave me a, a boost, you know, to say, okay, this is why I'm doing it. So every day may not be a good day, but when you have a day like that, it's great. Um, so you go back to your why as to why you're doing what you're doing and that'll help put things back into perspective for you. Um, days when I'm procrastinating bad, um, I try to work at least five or ten minutes straight, no distraction, don't do anything else, just get into whatever I'm procrastinating about. And a lot of times that will force me to go back into what I was doing. Um, after about five or 10 minutes, it's like, okay, now I know, I, I, let me just get it done. And so I'll finish whatever it is, except for that book on procrastination that's still on my bed. Still working on that, you know? <laughs> and then you have to figure out why you're procrastinating, because there's different reasons why you might procrastinate on something. It could be, Maybe you don't know what to do next, so you're just kind of putting it off until you figure it out. Um, it could be that you think you don't have the tools to do You know what to do, but you don't have the tools to do it. So you might be putting it off until you figure out how to get it done. But you, you need to figure out the key to what you're procrastinating about to help you get over that procrastination. And sometimes it's just straight up fear. You don't want to take that next step. You're not sure what might happen. And when it comes to that, you have to talk to that fear. You have to figure out what that fear is about. Talk to it. You're not going to let it get the best of you. That's when you pull out your affirmations, your mantra, and you start to tackle that fear because the fear will cripple you. And that will take a lot of people down from their business because they're just afraid to do the next step or afraid to talk to someone because they're embarrassed. And everybody's in the same game. That's when you find a good group of people, you know, or a person that can help talk you through it. Um, go to a networking group and, you know, and meet some peers that can say, okay, this is what I did, you know, and discuss it and try to get through whatever it is that's holding you back from moving on to your next step. Um, one thing a lot of people tell me is that they wake up in the middle of the night and they write, you know, because things are popping into their head. One of the things I did to stop that, because I used to do that all the time, because whatever time I wake up, that's what time I wake up, and that's what they, the time my day starts. So if I wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning, I'm pissed, <laughs> because my day is starting at 3 o'clock in the morning now, because I'm not going to go back to sleep. So what I started doing is, before I go to bed, start writing down everything I need to do the next day. Anything that pops into my head, just write it, write it down, write it down. And I notice I wake up less and less in the middle of the night saying, oh, I need to do this. Or, oh, I need to work on that because I already know I need to do it. I wrote it down. I'm going to remember it because it's on paper and then I can get to it in the morning. So now I might wake up at five o'clock and say, OK, I can start my day like I did this morning. So I'm so glad I got here on time, you know, <laughs> but um, and my mantra is get comfortable with um, being uncomfortable. So everybody needs to find that mantra, something that, you know, resonates in you that you can say, OK, I can do this. And then I have a bunch of affirmations that I have around the house. I have my vision board, which really helps you hone things in. Um, and then I have a, a goal board, and these are my goals that I wrote down, and this is what I want to do. But on my um, vision board, in the right in the middle of it, I put, what are you afraid of? 
And so when I get up in the morning, if something's on my mind or something's bothering me, I talk to that. I talk to that fear, whatever it is I'm afraid of, whatever it is that's bothering me, and I start working it out. And I notice as I've been doing that, a lot of things just dissipate because a lot of the stuff that you're afraid of or you don't want to do is all in your head. You know, so once you get over that hurdle of, you know, talking to, you, you know, your committee up here, you can start getting through some stuff because there's some committee members you're going to need to throw out. There's some committee members you need to add in, but you need to really just start focusing on yourself and what you're thinking about because this is all mental. This is all mental. This is because what, whatever you're thinking is what's going to come out. You know, so if you're thinking I'm not going to make it, I'm thinking, I'm, you know, that's that's what's going to happen. So you have to keep that positivity in your head saying, OK, this may be a rough day, but I'm going to get over it. And tomorrow's going to be a better day. And if tomorrow, the next day is a rough day, you're going to be like, look, the next day is going to be a better day. But you have to keep that positivity flowing because if you don't, you'll, you, you, you're going to literally just stall yourself. You know, so. Um, some of the things I do to distress, I, I like hiking, walking. That's where I do a lot of my thinking. Sometimes I'll say, okay, I'm gonna go out for two miles and I'm gonna just go into the woods. And then, you know, I realize like my feet really hurt bad and my knees hurt and I realize I just walked six miles, you know? <laughs> so, but you're working things out while you're out there, you know? So find that thing that you can do that you can just let it all out. You know, exhaust yourself sometimes. Sometimes it's just going back into remembering what you're doing. Um, a lot of things pop into my head while I'm walking. I used to carry a journal with me so I could start writing stuff down because by the time I got back to the car, I was usually exhausted and I forgot what I was thinking about in the woods. So now I just keep something with me. I can write it down real quick and then I can go home and work on it. Um, and the worry, the, the, the worry that people have that goes along with the fear. Like I said, identify the, what you're worrying about come up with a game plan and then take action on it. Because worry and fear, same boat. Both of them, you know, will power, paralyze you. Both of them will stall you out. You know, so they, they go hand in hand. And then um, one thing I have to do is unclutter my work area because I notice when things start to get really cluttered, I can't think as clearly because everything is cluttered. And sometimes there are certain things that catch my eye that I know I need to do and I put it off, I put it off. And then when I finally do it, I'm like, oh, that's nice, you know? So uncluttering your area that, so you could think and let things flow because all that clutter is actually cluttering your mind, you know, because you see all this stuff in front of you that you gotta do and all these papers and this and that. And once you clear all that stuff out, a lot of it's garbage, throwing in garbage, you're like, oh, it's not as bad as I thought. So that actually helps. Um, learn from your mistakes. Learn from anything that you didn't like because a lot of things aren't mistakes, they're just things in your learning curves. So the, what's the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting the same result. And a lot of people do that. They were like, okay, it didn't work this time, I'm gonna do it again. I didn't work this time, I'm gonna do it again. And they're doing the same exact thing and it's not working. So you have to switch up, figure out what's not working and then try to change something in it. And a lot of times that means going out of your comfort zone like today, you know? <laughs> Cause I am not one to stand in front of the camera. And then start with your easiest task. Make up a list of what everything you need to do Start with the easy ones, knock some stuff off, give yourself some power. Be like, okay, I got a list of 10 things, I just knocked off three, I can, you know, so just start with something easy, something that you know is doable, something that you know you're gonna succeed in to help give you that little push. And um, I went to a, a what you call it, a, a time management class. And one of the things that they had us do for a week was you uh, do an hourly chart of everything that you do for the day. And each hour you put down what you were doing. And then you go through that chart and in the red, you mark anything red that didn't make you money that day. And then you mark anything green that didn't make you money. And then you can see what you're doing. Because a lot of people don't realize what they're doing. They think that they're busy, 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 busy. But a lot of times you're busy doing absolutely nothing. So then when you start marking that red, you you realize half your day is red, you're like, oh crap, you know, what do I need to change to make most of my day green? Because that's your goal is to make your day green, not make your day red. And they call it a lot of things your $10 jobs, you know, that you should be given to an admin person or something like that. And again, a lot of people are fearful of getting an admin person because you're like, I can barely pay myself. How am I paying somebody else? But it really did start to sink in with me when I realized that I was taking myself off the road so much because I'm doing admin work 
I could have been doing something else that made me money. I said, okay, now I understand. Yeah, you need to get someone, even if it's just for a couple hours a week so they can take care of a couple of things for you. There's a lot of people out there that'll work, you know, four hours for you for a week because they're doing other things also. And, you know, that's just a little bit of extra cash for them. And one of the things I know a lot of people have issues with, especially when they're self-employed, is money, cash flow. And one of the things that um, I've, seen, I've seen in the past take a lot of people out of the game is that they didn't have a big enough cash flow, so they had to stop what they were doing. I say, if you have to get a part-time job, get a part-time job. You didn't fail at what you were doing. You just supplement your income while you're getting up to where you need to be. And there are a lot of flexible, flexible, flexible part-time jobs out there. I mean, just last week I was looking at some things. I found three jobs in one week. You know, just in all flexible. All of them, you could work whatever hours you want to work. So there's, there's things out there. Don't be afraid to say, look, I'm struggling or, okay, my cash flow is not where I want it to be. So you might have to get something. It might only be for three months. You need to get a little something on the side until things pick up. But you do what you need to do to get to where you need to go. You know, and that's all I have for today. So is that remind my oh. dollar watchers who aren't at the table who you are oh. and what you do. And once again, I am Lori from New York Life. I'm here to help you with your long-term care, life insurance, annuities, investments, 529s, and financial planning. Thank you, Lori. Thank you. Well done. All right.